Hey, it's Dan Melnick. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Zing, and I'm proud to be a sponsor of this podcast. So please check us out today as we can help fuel your business growth. MyZing.io. Thank you. Firstly, uh, thank you very much, uh, Anurag, for giving me opportunity to interview you for my channel. Thanks. My pleasure. So I've gone through your profile. I can see you have done a lot of work uh, in your career and also right now. Uh, with the with the jobs that you're doing. So I thought to tell about your work to my audience. That sounds good. I'll be happy to. <laughs> so before that, can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Yes, so uh, so I'm Anurag Srivastava and I work as a, a professor and chairperson of computer science electrical engineering department at West Virginia University. I also have a joint appointment with Pacific Northwest National Lab, which is one of the Department of Energy National Lab. And I also have a adjunct professor appointment at Washington State University in Pullman, Washington. You offer up? So I'm originally from India, uh, but have been in the uh, US for almost uh, 23 years. So can you can you tell a little bit about your background so that my audience will know? Yeah, so I was, uh, you know, born in a small village at uh, uh, in India at uh, in, in UP, uh, Uttar Pradesh, and then I went to school there, uh, you know, in multiple different city, but all in uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, India, and after graduating uh, from Kanpur. You know, I worked at uh, for one of the project from Sweden, uh, which is called Swedes, funded by them. But it was a project of uh, IIT Kanpur and uh, uh, you know m multiple different institutions, including uh, Asian Institute of Technology Thailand. I worked there for a for a few months, uh, and then in IIT Kanpur for several months or almost during the two year duration period. And then I came to Chicago for my PhD, uh, which uh, you know was mainly on electrical engineering and power system, power grid design, and how to make it more reliable and resilient. And then I, uh, after completing my PhD, I joined in, uh, as a research faculty in Mississippi State University. I worked there for five years. Then I continued to. Washington State University and, you know, basically worked for there 11 years before joining West Virginia University as a, a department chair. And uh, what was your subject uh, when you're doing the PhD? Yeah, so my PhD topic was mainly on the power grid uh, computational analysis, which was all about how do I make the power grid uh, analysis or computing uh, you know, develop in such a way that we can assess that how stable power grid is uh, in terms of different event when it's happening. And uh, if, you know, like, so power grid is all around us. You know, like if we have, a, uh, you know, if you're in, living in a building or in house and work in an office, then everything is supplied by you know, uh, and most of the time it's supplied by uh, one of the grid provider, uh, you know, grid operator who are providing the power to us. So that energy is coming from the power grid and a lot of event happens uh, which impact the performance and that's how we lose the power sometime. And one, you know, so it should be stable, it should be reliable, it should be economical. And then I, in doing my PhD, I focus more on the stability and that too on very specific kind of stability, which is about voltage. Uh, you know, like in, in India, we get uh, uh, 220 volt power at home and here we get 110. So how do we make sure that uh, voltage is stable and even with the different kind of event that can happen into the power grid because it's, it's a really large system. So just like things fail, you know, with, if you have a lot of component in power grid also things fail and we need to make sure that it's still reliable and still stable. So that was my focus in the power grid uh, area during my PhD. 
and uh, how you uh, got into computer science yeah so you know the first thing was like uh, uh, even during my bachelor's in you know, a bs degree when we were uh, you know when we take classes we do take some classes which you know everything is becoming was becoming digital at that time computer was uh, uh, and then i'm talking about like 20 24 years before so uh, you know of course computer was introduced and and it doesn't matter that what kind of engineering degree you are pursuing there will be some uh, you know some kind of classes which will in, get you into computer science at least in computer or computing and coding right and it's interesting because even when i was uh, uh, in class 7th you know grade 7 and i was in allahabad and there used to be a uh, you know what is called um it's it's, it's more like for uh, development of kits so there's a you know there's an organization there uh, which is you know related to and started by past uh, prime minister jawaharlal nehru and so when i was in class grade uh, you know seventh of course the computer was not there in in school uh, that i used to go but uh, it was there and and that was my first exposure to you know computing and computers you know computers and i started uh, you know liking coding and uh, that was long back but i developed uh, code for uh, uh, you know there is one game called ludo so i developed that code long back you know when I was when i was like uh, in grade 7 and that code uh, that game was actually sold to to one of the developer who who makes game and so that was my first exposure and you know so i always used to like uh, coding and uh, using that to solve problems and uh, so doesn't matter that was my uh, you know degree for you know basically bs degree or masters degree uh, we have to use coding to solve a problem in another engineering domain but but the coding was kind of integrated into in, in engineering so and and then you know that same coding becomes uh, machine learning and and then same coding becomes a problem or vulnerability because it's you know software has vulnerability and that comes with the cybersecurity problem so uh, so i was uh, familiar with all these terms and, and then keep learning about uh, you know beyond coding i mean so you know computer science different term which we already learned as a part of electrical engineering you have to take a computer engineering courses about what's inside computer how do you how does microprocessor work and and you know different component and when i got into chicago uh, to start my phd you know my advisor told that uh, well here are the different component you have to put your computer yourself so we had to basically connect all the you know component on motherboard and uh, and and make the computer work with uh, uh, you know and and we did and it took time but we did and then uh, of course we have to code to solve a problem of power grid reliability and stability but uh, that coding was uh, you know helped me because i had a background in that and and then we continued uh, you know after phd i continued as a uh, you know faculty in mississippi state and then uh, washington state and a lot of my colleague uh, because i joined a department which is uh, you know joint department between computer science and electrical engineering and computer engineering so we i i worked there and you know a lot of my colleague like next to my office was in computer science and that resulted into a lot of uh, collaborative projects together research projects together and and that's how i i keep getting more and more exposure to you know computer science area uh, and and my background and my interest in the past you know and learning of course helped to understand them and learn more about it and then i started teaching with them some computer science courses like cyber security of the electric grid was one of the course that we taught together and, and that also became a first textbook in that area that i wrote Uh, with my colleague so you know 
uh, I think the world is becoming digital and uh, you know it doesn't matter that in what area you are uh, you have to use computer and then based on your interest and how much you want to know about that how this work and what is needed to make it a better either it's a cyber security problem or or solving a machine learning problem or you know uh, designing a new computing system which is more about computer engineering you 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 have the opportunity to learn uh, and contribute towards and uh, you as a chair person and also you as a, a faculty professor so how is this role right now you are into three different roles you are working also as a scientist so uh, completely yeah. three different roles so how is that and uh, you are also i can understand you are uh, you know teaching different subjects so how you are able to uh, be this diverse yeah so uh, you know basically as a department chair i have to manage the department which is uh, you know basically comes with the students uh, and then faculty and because i that's what i was doing before becoming department chair so it, it you know it makes more uh, uh more ability to manage them because uh, that's what i was doing right so you know you you know i saw a quote somewhere that uh if you're coming from a if you're a manager and if you're coming from a domain that uh domain knowledge which means in this case it's uh, being a professor yourself uh you can do a better job of managing professors right and and then uh, uh you know basically working with them and so they are still colleague but uh, because i and know them and i have worked like them so i understand them better to uh, to get the department going and and make the our students more successful in in what were they want to do right as a professor you know your job is basically to of course teach you know students but also do research and that depends on the university that where we are in like uh, west virginia university is r1 university which means like high research intensive and so that washington state university is also uh, r1 and and high research active university so at both the places you have to do research as part of your professor uh, role and uh, so that automatically comes with uh, ability to work as a scientist because you know if you're doing research then you're applying your fundamental theory and uh, uh, for certain applied or, or depending upon that what is your focus uh, so you already are you know you have to have a phd degree and and you have to have uh, enough experience to to contribute towards research and and you know that's what scientists do so in pnl you know we uh, as a professor the one thing that you get is every few years which is typically 6 year you can get uh, what is called professional leave or sabbatical so i use that time to work at multiple different organization and pacific nasos national lab was one of them because they were not too far in in washington they were in the same state and there you know i really like that working there and the type of problem they are solving uh, and that resulted into my joint appointment as at the national lab and which i continued since then uh, that was uh, you know not not a long back but like 6 year before so all these are complementary uh, roles and uh, you know now as a department chair i teach less uh, because i have to manage the department and also do some research and uh, being a research scientist and uh, working on a subject is completely different from uh, teaching students uh, what you have already learned so how is this uh, you know how do you enjoy these different roles yeah so uh, in fact uh, you know like when you are teaching students the one thing that uh, you can do a better job of depending upon that what you know you're teaching young student who are just like a freshman in 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 their bs degree program or you you you're teaching graduate students who are already have done bs and and they're doing masters or they're doing phd so the teaching each of them 
if you are updated with the new technology and new advancement in that area that you're going to teach, you'll probably do a better job in telling them that, you know, if you learn this, what will happen? So in other it's it's kind of related. Like, so uh, teaching, which is already done, you're absolutely right. But if I also teach that, you know, this is what, you know, uh, you have to know it because this is fundamental and written in the book and no knowledge. But if you know this, this is what you can invent or this is what you can contribute towards making a solving a new problem. Then they will see that the reason for, uh, you know, like a lot of time they might not know that why I'm why I'm studying this, this topic. But if someone is doing research, that's one advantage that you can uh, be you can have that being more updated about those topics and telling them that this is how you use it. And this is how you I mean, you personally have done it and, and this is how other scientists are doing it. Uh, this is how other professionals are doing it. So, you know, in some way we can relate these two, two, two things together to get this diverse job done. Do you remember uh, how was your studies uh, and uh, how was your experience before 23 years when you was in India? Do you still remember? Yes, I do. And, uh, you know, in fact, the student phase is something that you never forget. <laughs> and, uh, uh, because at that time you of course are have a narrow focused goal you know you you're not and some students are both very mature and some are not so you know I was somewhere in between and uh, and sometimes we take classes you know which we don't know that why we are learning this and how does it relate to uh, the overall goal of the degree program and what it will enable me to do uh, of course, later well, after graduation and you start working for industry or you start working for like like me, which is uh, and I did work in industry before joining Academia. In, uh, uh, you know, then we realize that, OK, you know, what did we what were we learned as a freshman or as a you know second year student, which is, uh, you know, we call it uh, so for more year or third year and, and final year. In fact, the curriculum is designed with some thoughts, right? So you have a more lapse in the beginning and then you have to do more towards designing kind of work in engineering. Uh, so depending on the degree program, the curriculum is well thought and designed, uh, but sometimes we don't learn. You know, we know that what we need to learn, but we don't know why we are learning. And, and that part uh, becomes clear sometime much after, which can be done better job, you know, uh, if we, if the who is teaching, if they can tell right away. And uh, can you share uh, your experience as a professor? You might have seen a uh, lot of students, uh, 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 you know, teaching and asking, uh, you know, getting questions from them coming from different countries and uh, mm -hmm. uh, having different kind of questioning. So how was that experience when you was a professor and teaching them about the subject? With, you are into ele uh, electrical engineering, also you are into computer science and engineering. So how was that total experience as a being a, being in the teaching profession? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I would say that uh, teaching profession is something that um, that I'm proud of. Uh, the reason is that I see students you know when they come in the class and then by the time they end and then they keep in touch after graduation and uh, and often you know they will send me car or they will send me email that you know what what whatever i learned in your class is now helping me to get my job done in industry is always very rewarding right so uh, so basically i'm uh, helping very closely in someone professional development so that's very rewarding part. And the thing is that, you know, in a teaching job, you're always young because you're surrounded by young uh, students uh, who are, uh, you know, of course, some of them are very, very motivated and, uh, you know, brilliant mind. Some of them are, uh, uh, you know, doing things because they, they want to, they have a goal in mind. So the different kind of students with a different perspective, and getting them all together on the same page so that they can learn 
in a similar environment and uh, you know what the goal of the course is uh, is important but for me it's all about perspective you know like uh, how do you learn things how do you solve problems which is beyond that course that they are taking uh, with me right so so i do focus on that and uh, i think you know with my background and uh, uh, you know it has shaped up that how do i teach compared to someone else and, and someone with more you know there there there's a also a field research field which is called engineering education you know someone who's working on that area they will have different perspective or maybe better perspective that how to teach better way because it's all it's all about how do i apply scientific fundamental knowledge and uh, make it to applied work which is uh, in done in industry you know when new product come like you know iphone laptop and and this is how it happened but also in teaching i mean teaching is the same thing your product is slightly different this is a, it's a student who is learning but uh, in uh, the the fundamental principle that we apply to teach so the learning is maximum is is a process so it's very similar concept and how do we apply and and then uh, just like in uh, any product development cycle in 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 industry we try to bring diverse set of ideas together to make a new product you know here it's happened the same thing we we bring diverse set of faculty to design the curriculum to uh, to teach students in a best possible way and students themselves they make it uh, very clear like you know like some students will come and say that i did not learn this part or this happened and they provide a lot of very useful input to you know to enable us to make a better learning environment for them and uh, how you are able to be successful as a scientist uh, also as a professor and also being in uh, this long in a education field what are those qualities that help you to be what you are today and uh, teach people what you have learned all these years yeah so you know the first thing which is very important is uh, staying motivated our purpose in life right so so my purpose has been very clear making an impact and uh, and this that's applied in any field like right? and someone need to be successful they need a they need a reason that why they are doing that and uh, what keeps them what makes them happy and and excited to go to the work so so my motivation has been always uh, driving me uh and that motivation basically make you more professional to be on time to be hard working uh, to be nice to you know because that's very important uh, that who are you working with you have to be nice to them in terms of uh, thinking good about them and uh, you know so all these four things uh, basically help you to move forward you know knowing your purpose why you're doing it and uh, and then applying all these things to be to get you know basically get that success uh, or or get that your motivation or goal which is uh, you know hard working sincere and uh, st- and keep staying motivated uh, you know it is is important there are two persons in you uh, one is an engineer and also one is an uh, a people's person so as a communicator so engineering is a problem solving thing that you have that you have developed uh, you know since you were in india and went to us and uh, developed that and uh, you have done your uh, uh, you know phd so which is completely engineering which ha- which needs a different kind of a thinking process and when comes to pro- uh you know the profession called professor you have to communicate and you have to tell what you have learned so how these two people are contributing to uh, you know to to the educational institution that you are working and also for as a scientist that you are working for the laboratory yeah so yeah i think this is a really you know good question because uh, when you and that's why you, you know all these different experience make you a, a different person 
right? So uh, engineering problem solving is, is uh, you know, typically what we learn is, is more about that everything has to be converted into a mathematical problem and then, uh, you know, solve applying the basic principle of mathematics and physics and, you know, chemistry, depending on that what kind of engineering it is or, you know, uh, sometime mechanical engineering will be looking at also physics. Uh, so applying these fundamental principle uh, is gives you solution, right? And also give us the boundary that some problem that we cannot solve it. And same thing with, uh, you know, that fundamental science that you apply uh, to solve a problem, uh, that same fundamental science you need to become a scientist because, you know, you're basically... Uh, Bringing your learning and 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 be, become a long-term learner because every problems, you know, kind of motivate and forces you to learn more. And and the technology is changing and the world is changing, right? So if you stop learning more, we cannot we cannot solve the problem, which is the next. At least some of the problem we cannot solve, which will be the, uh, you know evolving problem because it comes because of the new technology advancement, right? And then being a people person, you know, the one thing is there that you don't have numbers to work with. But uh, but the problem, uh, solving skill still helps that. Uh, the reason is that, you know, uh, and that's how the cognitive science work because, you know, cognitive science is saying that uh, this is how people think, this is how the brain work, right? So it's a science, and then there is a, another cognitive engineering, which is uh, basically applying the engineering principle on how the brain works, right? So same problem, different perspective, and if it is done by the same person, then uh, you know you you will be applying all the principles that you've learned, either it's engineering or it's a science or uh, problem solving skills, or uh, management skill, which is another important. Uh, you know, not formally trained. At least I am not, but I have to. I have to train myself by taking some online courses and those kind of things for management skills. So these all come together, and uh, and also some of the skill get intermixed while solving the problem in different domains. And which one is easy, engineering or uh, uh, being a people's person? <laughs> Yeah, so I would say engineering is, is much easier because it's a number and uh, you're not working with diverse set of brains which can behave in their own way. <laughs> and uh, all these years, uh, there, there, is a, there, there must be a constant change uh, in the technology and uh, in the society in the world. So as an engineer, as a, as a scientist, as a continuous learner, how you are able to adopt yourself to the constant science that is happening and also what are those qualities that made you to be successful and be inspiration for a lot of people today? Yeah, so I think the one thing is that, you know, the same thing that having a purpose and if I want to make keep making an impact on a student's life, then, you know, I should be keep pace with their learning and uh, I should... Uh, prepare them for the next phase of challenging world that they're going to work for, right? And, and because the technology is changing, world is changing, then I have to also try. I mean, there are so much and so fast changing. I mean, just talk about AI. I mean, AI is changing really, really quick. So it's not even possible to learn everything. But being aware of, you know, like what are different things that is happening in this world, comes with, uh, again, first motivation that, you know, you want to learn uh, and you want to learn for a purpose. And the second thing is that uh, uh, you cannot learn everything by yourself. So talk to experts who are, who who does that, right? And and that's how we, we go to conferences. We go to, uh, to find each and every opportunity to talk to experts, uh, you know, who are around us, uh, you know, either as a colleague because you know this department is full of experts in different areas because they focus on i focus on power grid but they they you know someone else is focusing on uh, uh, health science and someone else you know they're they're doctors so everyone is has 
develop their expertise and talking to them and and discussing about things and learning about it, it changes your uh, overall perspective and and being more ready to this fast changing world and how you are able to manage uh, being a leader for uh, professors and also being the uh, head and uh, leader and uh, being the torch bearer for the students how you are able to be the good manager and get the result that, get the result that you want yeah so you know it's always a even a learning process my, for myself because you know uh, once you are managing a team of you know like 10 people compared to this whole department which is you know has hundreds of employees if you count the student employee it becomes more challenging because then you cannot talk to each and every one every week which is kind of required to understand them right so understanding understanding each and one of them is is the first thing right so some of the problem or some of the challenges or some of the needs i will be learning as they come to me and and then trying to solve that uh, you know one by one so so being being updated and organizing events and and uh, being at least opening the opportunity for them to talk about their problem that's the first thing uh second is that you know once i find about the problem then being committed to solve that in in a in a designated time or reasonable amount of time is the second thing and then third thing being proactive that if i talk to other department chair which is managing another department in the nation then i know that this problem might come so being proactive uh, and and having some of those proactive event or proactive policy implementation even before they come so so these these three things typically help to to manage all of these and uh, how you will create uh, a curriculum which will work for everyone now uh, who who has uh, different levels of and uh, different levels of education and different levels of knowledge and who came from different backgrounds yeah students. yeah so it's very challenging and that's how we we have been uh, you know trying to not only develop a curriculum but also prep, prep courses you know so like if you're not ready for this curriculum you know there are some prep courses that you can take uh which you can uh, prepare yourself or we collect a so set of uh, you know free online courses which they can take to prepare themselves before starting the degree program you know so everything starting from uh, you know fundamental math which is much needed in engineering and computer science both uh we we basically provide that uh, you know working with university different uh, faculty and uh, leadership and then uh, 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 if we cannot teach ourselves those prep courses then we try to find that online and and prepare a list so that we can provide and then once uh, they are at the same level then you start uh, with a similar kind of curriculum and and you know and then also making this aware that uh, this awareness of that there are diverse set of people in your class with a different background and what are the good practice to to follow while teaching to take care of each one of them uh, you know so telling our faculty again and again that's very important and uh, tell me you are scientist uh, a constant uh, learner a person who is into self education and self talk so how what is that driving force which is making you to uh, uh, work on it and spend a lot of time in uh, understanding the concepts yeah so you know i mean i i try but i don't get that much of time as i used to get in the past because it's with this management and uh, leadership opportunity but when will i get you know reading books and uh, and watching another uh, youtube video which is talking about a new concept has been you know my my time to uh, any extra or any leisurely time that i get i i invest in that of course other than family and and the main reason to learn is that you know like the same willingness to to keep a pace with this fast changing world uh, at least in my area right uh, at least in those area which i have higher interest 
compared to other areas which you know i was never exposed to so you know of, of course computer science is very very fast changing thing so just if i try to keep the pace in that it will take my all time and 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 that i need to select that where i want to focus so ai and cyber security uh, and then anything which is applicable to the power grid which i work on you know keeps me motivated that you know like anything that comes in that area or any ways i can improve the impact on you know it's not about students but solving as an engineer uh, solving a problem of the society and as a scientist making a new product you know so so the all these three passion come together and uh, basically when i have a time i i have to invest in one of these <laughs> to to make it uh, be- to become a better scientist or become a better engineer or become a better professor so from this uh, long uh, you know the long uh, long time you know the the, the time that you have spent uh, Uh, in education and also on your career so the day you started when you you know as a student uh, in india you know uh, studying a particular subject today you become uh, uh, you know a, a teacher and uh, being uh, you know inspiration for a lot of people to study about that particular subject you saw the 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 the, the change the constant change that is happening in the technology in the world in human beings and uh, you saw that evolution so how do you define it like you know years ago how it was and now and what is the difference that you are observing yeah well for me it it has been uh, you know it's more about awareness right so when we uh, basically age the the biggest thing that changes is perspective to look things as you gain more knowledge uh, as a student you're focusing on your degree program you know like Uh, at that time my focus was like you know like how do i do well in this course right uh, because that was the focus on that semester and and some of the tougher courses how do you do at least to pass it right so so everything uh, uh, from there uh, you know has changed now to how do i make society better how do i make my student learn better how do i make uh, you know as a, a professional development for my colleagues because as a department chair uh, how do i make them uh, to become more successful so so this whole perspective you know should automatically change because you have a different role but how much you are prepared for that uh, has been depending upon so many different factors right uh, which is each position that you get over the time and and how do you how do you take that to decide that what should be your next step and over the years as you get uh, better and better perspective of this diverse playing this diverse different kind of role you 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 become better in solving problems and uh, but one thing is sure that you know the way technology is changing now and the way it used to change at that time i think has been now it has been much faster changing world compared to at that time now there could be two reason because i was not aware of and and now i'm more plugged in and and aware of but the the perspective on how do i take these things in my life for the next step uh, is, is very important to adjust and uh, uh, and help others and you know like uh, uh, sometime you know when i look back like you know uh, yeah, like when i was student i was reading uh, books right which is required for each courses and when i come here you know like the the same person who wrote that book become my colleague right because we will go to the same conference and i will be always very respectful and very uh, you know uh, still surprised oh this the same person that i i read when i was student and and then all the way till i wrote my book myself and then some students are reading that you know so i i got this full cycle you know like reading books to meeting the authors and becoming author a book myself and but i know now with the much more broader perspective that 
how those students will behave if they are reading my book and they meet with me and uh, as a leader uh, as a uh, uh, as a, as a head of the institution uh, you are being the reason for uh, the skill set development and uh, you are going to be the reason for the students that uh, who are going to place in different uh, businesses and different uh, which belongs to different industries and uh, different companies so how do you train them or how do you let them know how what is happening outside the institution yeah so you know we do a lot of different things so one thing is uh, having a better relation with industry and bringing them and even uh, have them teach like a class in you know in in to students so so the students know that okay this industry is looking for these things so bringing industry where their students will be working bringing uh, you know industries also different kind like there's private industry there's a government and and then there are some uh, academia and and you know so all these uh, academy is something that we can always talk uh, but at least these industry they are not exposed to and bringing them together because industry also needs uh, a well trained students with uh, knowledge that they will solve the problem in that industry so they so they already reached out to you know they try to reach out to to basically like someone like department chair so that or you know other leader in academy so that they can get a better hire for their next job that they have opening for and you know so one thing that we did is uh, uh, you know we did industry day where i invited a lot of these industry member to come and and basically tell that are our students ready to work for them and and because it's a diverse topic and uh, diverse thinking of different industry you know they will they will say different things but our goal has been uh, always to find the common thing that we can like we can make our curriculum change so the students are better prepared and the students are getting a better job and uh, uh, you know basically contributing to society and industry right so that is one thing and the second thing is that someone who are more interested to contribute towards and especially the one who have graduated from here uh, you know you they are more devoted to to the university and to the student so they sponsor project so which means that they will tell the problem and uh, they will help students to work on the same project so they are again uh, more exposed to industrial problem and they are more exposed to uh, industry person who will be helping them to solve problem and then when they graduate they are better prepared of course just like any other university we do job fairs and you know like uh, hundreds of company will come and hire them so those those kind of things is going on and the second thing is uh, students club so we have encouraged our students to develop their own club uh, for different you know like if they want to work on ai they want to work on cyber security they want to work on radios there are like lot of different clubs which exist in computing and 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 we pair them with the industry which who is showing interest so they can directly talk to the industry a person and and invite them for their you know like what kind of work you do when you graduate from here right and and uh, so a lot of these events and bringing the students industry faculty and the government all together in different kind of event uh, make all of them do what they want to do is it easy to be uh, or become a scientist well it, it if someone has a uh, motivation and willingness then i would say it's it's, uh, it's easy because uh, you know it's it's not about things being hard or easy it's about someone prospective that uh, how do they take the challenge so some challenge are will seem difficult because that person is not motivated and does not have a background in that and uh, it will become easy because someone has a background and motivated to solve it there are multiple there are collection of skills that you have and uh, the skill sets that you developed uh, all these years uh, being in different position and doing different roles 
and uh, being a constant learner so how you are able to uh, uh, give that back to the students who are uh, you know who are willing to become you yeah so it's all about giving them opportunity you know like if someone is in the class and they are showing interest for uh doing research you know so so basically they are told in the class that if you want to do research come and talk to me you know come and talk to uh another faculty and then if we find that you know the students want to do research in this area which is my area then of course they are welcome to work with me if they are different area then then basically i i work as a connector to another faculty another industry another uh, opportunity or which is like internship that they can get and and do some kind of work um so so that has been you know of course kind of inbuilt like anyone who wants to do and if they have opportunity then they will go much further compared to if they don't get opportunity so bringing opportunity from everywhere from industry from uh, other faculty and 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 you know sharing them in the classes i think is very very important because that's how it connects uh, students it's all about knowledge if they don't have knowledge and opportunity then they don't even know that they are good in that so connecting them is important and uh, as a professor as a as an observer uh, how uh, what is your observation about uh, technology today's technology it can be artificial intelligence or information technology that is changing humanity and uh, that thing that is making uh, human things uh, more easier with the engineering uh, background that you have uh, and uh, you know what's your observation yeah so you know just like uh, you know medicine the you know it comes with a side effect so all the technology uh, comes with a side effect some has more side effect and some has less right so ai is uh, i mean each of these what kind of ai uh you know also comes with some side effect which is if ai can be used for good for the society it can be also used by the bad people you know like uh, to do things which was they were not able to think but they they can uh, now think with the help of ai to hurt the society so uh so ethical ai uses and then everyone is talking about that and like uh, uh how do i make sure that ai is only being used for good and if it is being used by bad then what do i do to find uh, another solution for that right which is typically called regulation like right? how do you regulate so it becomes a criminalized offense if someone is trying to use it for bad right but everyone has to agree that so it's it's a lot of discussion everyone has to come together uh but it's just like uh, you know i said that any technology that comes and as it's advancing uh, it is helping there's no doubt about that because you know any technology if it's getting attraction it is going to either solve some problem it is making life easy it is making it more convenient right so, so then only it will survive otherwise you know no one will be interested in those kind of technology but it all comes with uh, certain side effect if it is becoming more computerized more digital devices it comes with cyber security problem if it is becoming a, a you know like a, a iphone which is of course you know wonderful piece of innovation uh, it comes with a lot of people being more engaged with with those phone compared to among themselves so so you know so those are again societal problems so everything comes with the advantage and disadvantage uh, we just need to find that what percentage those are and if something at any time the disadvantage and you know becomes more than advantage then we have to find out make a policy and discard it and uh, today because of technology the world is interconnected and uh, these are uh, technology companies uh, become global and doing businesses and uh, uh, influencing and impacting and uh, creating change uh, in humans life uh, no matter which part they are from so 
what 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 suggestions or what advice is that you want to give or you would give to the technology leaders or the decision makers who are working on technology products and services yeah so it's all about knowledge and uh, you know like perspective right so if we keep emphasizing that you know if you're developing a technology uh, of course if anyone is developing a technology as a business their goal is to make money right but at the same time if we tell that uh, uh, at least keep them informed and make a rules and regulations around that how to make it fair how to take it to disadvantaged community how to make it uh, uh you know fair use of uh, and diverse use of this technology of course they will not do that if it's going to result into a business loss right but if they're going to if we if we develop a tech something which will make them still make money but not that much as they could have with you know so it's in an ethical way so finding this balance is is again developing a perspective in the leader so if the all the leader we can we can get this message that how to do things which will benefit you but do in ethical way do it in fairness way do it in uh, thinking about this diversity thinking about this uh, different part of the world and uh, and then do your things what you want to do you know the world will be definitely a much better place as a producer as a creator as a as an energy generator your products are students to it and uh, you are sending them to the world with the knowledge so you have seen the world uh, before 20 years how it was now you are seeing so what is going to be after 20 years with the knowledge that you are creating and what is the impact that is going to be and what is the change that is going to be on the planet are we going to go about the planet uh, you know with the space technology uh, increasing our uh, capacity and uh, finding new ways of uh, you know uh, finding new ways of doing things through engineering skills and are we going to expand our horizon yeah so i think uh, you know we are already making some progress on that uh, some are more far fetched which will take some more number of years and some are here right i mean either it's a new way to generate energy you know the, if we find a new materials to all the way to find a new land in another world uh, you know people have done that even you know like like the usa right i mean it was uh, a new world for uh, europeans right so uh, at that time because we did not have the technology to fly so it was definitely a new world now we have uh, you know faster rockets which can take us and there has been a private investment on that you know like taking people for fun in in space so so of course things are changing and will continue to change how many years will take to get to a certain advancement compared to another advancement which is you know we are more closer to Uh, the time will tell but uh, definitely things will continue to change and uh, you know someone who is uh, trained on on how to take the problem and solve it will be the one who will be making us keep moving forward and someone who is also trained on that how to do that in ethical and how to do that in societal good way will be will be the one who will be doing the technology with more advantage and less disadvantages and at last so what is your observation about my work have you seen any videos of mine on youtube well i saw one uh, and and i think it's it's a really good way to take the message out from uh, you know from one people to another one and and, uh, and hopefully it will influence a lot of people and thinking good about the world and you know so this is a good work you're doing i have done masters in software engineering also bachelor's in computer science and engineering and right now i'm working as a devops engineer for a uk company remotely and also uh, a couple of companies from us being sponsored for this podcast so uh, and that's my full time job 
So apart from that, I'm um, interviewing experts like you who are already in the industry and uh, who are uh, creating change and you know being in different parts of the world, from working in different industries, coming from different backgrounds. More than 100 countries experts I have inter- interviewed and more than 750 interviews I have done in last three years. So as an observer, as an observer, as an educator, as a professor, uh, how this this collection of knowledge is going to be helpful for me in coming days and uh, how I'm going to uh, impact the world. Yeah, so you're already doing that, right? I mean, uh, by sharing the knowledge uh, and, and the new generation which is uh, coming in, which, you know, you're part of that, but there is another next line of new generation. And, you know, the because the world is becoming more digital information, so they will be hopefully watch it. And, and as we have more people getting benefits from these uh, you know it will it will basically propagate so so they will get the word out and then there will be more likes on this and that means that more people are saying that okay this one is more liked so let's watch it and, and that's how the knowledge propagates and that's how uh, people get influenced their mind changes and they do great things for the world can i put this video on my youtube channel with your permission I'll be okay, yeah. And sure. also, can I put this and audio and video clip on my podcast, website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? That would be fine, yes. Great. Uh, do you have a final message uh, uh, to the listener and uh, the viewer who is watching and listening to you, no matter from which part of the planet they are watching and from which profession they belong to or they can be a student or already uh, a, a, a officer who is working. So do you have a final message to them? Yeah, I'll just say that, you know, like to everyone who is, uh, doesn't matter what you're doing, always try to find your passion and your purpose in life. Great. Thank you very much uh, for giving me your valuable time and uh, sharing some of your experience and answering to some of my questions. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Take care. Thanks.